Part 4 of Housewife Turn to Work Affair. All other parts down below. I'm not at all tired of plan as soon as she leaves. I immediately start plan B. I believe that what's making it simpler is that there is a set time frame. I'm not unsure of myself. I have a plan and a direction. But it's just this to her. I'm no longer even your friend after you move out. I'm the father of our son. And that's it. Your new best friend is the Om. You should leave me for him because he's worth it all and he's your new everything. When you're unwell or having a rough day, let him take care of you. Or have him assemble your furniture or mend things when they break. If he's not too preoccupied with his own bowl already. I don't live in the same universe as him. And perhaps if you ever manage to remove your head from your back. Let's examine where I am and whether we want to start over as a married couple and family. However, if he remains involved in your life in any way. If it's not related to our son, then don't even try to talk to me. I'm fine with that. I've been evaluating myself against the other man for the last few months. In every manner conceivable. The intangibles, mental, and physical. As though I was in the united relationship. I reevaluated my entire marriage to my wife. I reconsidered our level of intimacy. Everything. From the readily apparent physical objects. Maleness, height, appearance, etc. The way I handled my spouse. If I were sufficiently passionate, I would have done everything I have done for the last 17 years in comparison to what he has been doing for the past 7 plus months since the affair began. After that, I heard some remarks from my therapist and another person. First of all, quit comparing yourself to other men in the same way that men compare objects. My wife doesn't see it that way because she isn't a guy. To put it simply, a lot of things vanished when I attempted to observe things from a feminine perspective. Not that my wife was attempting to leave, but that was one of the major things. Though it may have come out in the text, the truth is that I'm throwing her out, and she's just grudgingly leaving. Therefore, there is still affection and attachment for me. My wife was there for me when I had a health scare early this year. She was crying even though, yes, she was compartmentalizing her affair. My counselor informed me, second, that he would be measuring himself against me. My wife might not notice it, but if I'm doing it, there's a good chance he is too. Especially if a relationship with her is what he truly desires. He is unable to contrast. In addition, I've shown several other women his picture. It also helps that they are all scratching their heads. I thought my wife would be there running errands and tidying up, so I stopped by her soon to be placed to drop something off. And sure enough, Devon, that is, the other man, is there. And even though I tell myself this over and over again, drive away. Get in your car and go. After parking, I approach her apartment and rap on the door. He was eating his lunch on the floor. I kick his meal and urge him to get the hell out, powering past my wife. He begins by saying, it's her place, it's her place, and keeps reiterating it throughout the conversation. I then confront him, and he retreats. My spouse had to intervene on our behalf. She's telling me to get out, and that guy is just grinning and picking up the phone to call the police. I just kick it out of his hand naturally. I did indeed kick it. He was really fantastic. And as he walks away from me, he keeps saying the same thing. When she finally gives up and tells him to go, he goes downstairs and still calls the police. As my wife is moving in and doesn't want to bother her neighbors, she is terrified and frustrated. I keep trying to get her to calm down so I can tell her that he has won. I'll let her go until she moves out because I'm done with her. One lanky white police officer, one hefty black officer, and the other man get the lanky officer arrive. I choose the large one. That is to say, they used to frequent Starbucks when I worked there, so I recognized them when I saw them. He kind of laughs when I tell them what occurred and the entire experience, that I know the law and all that, and that even though I never touched him, I know they have a duty to do. He essentially informs me that they have seen this a hundred times before and that if he hadn't been wearing the badge, he gave it to me. But it turns into a straightforward little process where they collect data. I'm not sure what the lanky man is told by the other man, but that smug look is back on his face. The stocky one approaches me and tells me he's going to file for a restraining order. I let him know my side. The gaunt one also informs me that the situation is twisted up and that I almost got jailed. I assured him I would be a man and take responsibility for my actions. The gaunt one apologizes and tells me to keep an eye on myself. He wouldn't feel bad about feeling and acting the way I do, but I have to be more intelligent than that. It seemed to me that the stocky one did not think well of the other man. That he could tell he was attempting to control and manipulate the situation's facts while posing as the helpless victim. One lanky guy encouraged me to just turn around and submit another restraining order if he does file one. That it will have an equally detrimental effect on him as whatever he could try to do, and that I should let his employer know when I shop there because one is in place. After the other man left, my wife became calm and stopped feeling humiliated or embarrassed. She found herself torn between two people, unsure of how to proceed or what course of action to take. She never stopped telling me how sorry she was, that she would tell him to stop bothering her and leave her alone, and that she was finished with the whole thing. I don't care that I don't think she's real. She'll be gone in no time, and to be completely honest, I feel amazing and like a burden has been taken off my shoulders. Not that I wanted to ex him. Nevertheless, I persisted in spite of the physical consequences, and he became into a little cowardly snitch. I told him that I don't fear anything, 
and it's okay if she wants to spend her time with a young boy like that. He won, I told her over and over. He received his small reward, and my therapist advised me to use the words I hope he's worth all this, because I'm done with it. It was undoubtedly not the best course of action. Yes, I should have taken off in my car. I completed the necessary tasks even though I chose the short-term benefits over the long-term objective. And I said to my wife that I'm sorry for stirring up trouble and upsetting her neighbor, but I'm not sorry for getting in his face. Furthermore, I don't regret defending my partnership, and it's okay if she gets upset and decides to leave. Strangely enough, she was going to file her response today, and in the course of the exchange, she furiously informed me that she intended to amend it to divorce. If she did, I asked her. She said, no, I wouldn't, I've done enough. She also insists that I take my son and in-laws to Orlando the following week. Fortunately, Siri and I are traveling to Bangkok till Tuesday. She departs on Wednesday and will go by sundown on the 3rd. If and when she chooses to reconcile, I will hold her filing one. Given that they collaborate, that might be a requirement of the NC letter. Nevertheless, I learned from a coworker to whom I said this that my wife had told her without asking. The other man told my wife that he might apply for a transfer or has already applied, and my wife's response was, at worst, insignificant. She appears to have been informing her colleague about his mistakes and other mishaps. And to tell you the truth, I've lost a lot of love for him because I saw them eating lunch on the floor together. I was able to look this guy in the eye again and saw what a nasty, cowardly guy he is, and I'm sickened and appalled by that. Not that love is incapable of returning, only that she's considering leaving me for him. But to be honest, it's hiding and defending itself, so she'll have to bring it out of me. Really, phoning the police when nothing happened is absurd. If he said I was abusing her, I wouldn't be shocked if he did so to enhance his image and give the impression that he is a shining knight. We've already submitted our paperwork for divorce. Today, she submitted her response. She departs on August 3rd. That concludes it. I've been in Plana for a few months now, and most of the time it's working. Plan B is on the way, but it's LC because of our little child. There has already been a 180, which has an impact as well. She wonders why I have so many new clothing, or why the Outback waitress made out with me on Sunday. All of the plans, techniques, and strategies I have been using, to be honest. And everything is proceeding without a hitch. I felt wonderful about the confrontation today since I was able to confidently express how I felt. He behaved as the coward that I knew he was. I'm fantastic. Just a brief but intriguing update from this morning on yesterday night. As we discussed the issue, my wife made two remarks to me. Remember that this has no bearing on her moving out and other things. These are only fascinating observations. 1. The fact that the OM decided not to seek a restraining order against me infuriated her. He still will, and in order to show everyone what a coward he is, he'll counterfile and have it sent to his place of employment in the middle of the day. In addition, his soon-to-be ex hopes to use it as leverage in their custody dispute. He was hoping she would sever our relationship even further. Also, he believes that I am dangerous. I also learned that he wasn't amused by my jokes and laughter with the police. 2. Completely unrelated to the subject at hand, my wife has been wondering why I cover myself after I take a shower, I don't really know why I did it. But suddenly, she noticed. She also stated how she's seen my weight loss and physical fitness changes. She became particularly aware of it when I addressed him. I ballooned up, like I'm a fish or something, she remarked. I replied that while I might be, it's also because he cowered when faced with conflict. Nothing is altered, but then again. I'm currently out of the country, but here are a few small changes. She has gone out purchasing small items for her flat. Yet, she has been texting me to let me know how much she misses me and to ask that I get by while I'm away. But spoke with my spy, her buddy, and coworker. She approached her and reportedly told her about the altercation. She claimed not to have seen that side of me before. How? Her buddy inquired. In response, my wife said I became agitated, combative, and violent. I puffed up after that. That chat left her friend with a really strong impression, which makes me question if showing up very physically could flip the tide. After all, with no effort, the other man has been able to exude confidence and authority in his strictly regulated workplace. In addition to manipulating our marital issues, I believe there was another component that made him seem really attractive to her. But when I pushed him outside his comfort zone, he gave up. He's undoubtedly playing the I'm a better man for not fighting card and that seems like the right thing to do in most cases. But two things jump out at me in this case. One, he rushed to the police rather than facing the inevitable repercussions of his behavior like a man would. Second, a superior man would never pursue a married lady. Clearly, the friend also informed me that my wife informed her that the Aum despises me. Like, I think it's fantastic that I'm under his skin now, but I care a flying rat's ass. I pursued him, his job, and his family. Whichever way, I've turned this into a conflict. When she moves out, he might win a fight, but I will always win this one. Not or not we reconcile. But when she moves out, I'll be there in the back of his mind. He won't know that I won't be in actual contact, either. He has to be comforted because he knows she's leaving my house against her will. The strain will increase, and my reply will be sufficient harm if he continues to file the restraining order. 
particularly if I can include my son in that. Additionally, a few times before my spouse heads out to work in the morning, she has been seen staring at me from my side of the bed on several occasions, and on Friday she told me that she would miss me, which is to be expected whether or not she eats cake. However, I've seen a few more changes in her. There will be more. Why do you still wait for her to make the decision on your future, please? Why do you depend so much on her judgment? She's in your face, having an affair. Yes, you continue to hope for this. In response, the opus says, I'm not holding out hope. I'm concentrating on myself and she's getting moved out. I still adore her, though, despite everything. My child is still under her care. Furthermore, I don't think she's completely into him. I am the only one who truly knows my wife. I'm aware that she's still in her fog and that the odds are on my side. However, she will have to discover the hard way that the grass isn't always greener. I refuse to accept this. That's the reason she's leaving. She isn't choosing to do this. The separation is the same. She's handling stuff through my attorney. How does that inform you? If I know her, the affair should be ended by the holidays. She must mature as she is, and this will compel her to do so. I'm certain that I still want to live out my days with her after 17 years. However, not while the affair persists. We'll have a ton of work to do to fix it after it ends. However, it is feasible. I would like to be one of the success stories here for a change. Given what has transpired, I believe it is possible. Many people ask me why I continue to hope or cope with it. It's because I work in that capacity. I feel bad for those whose marriages fail. However, I don't want to be a member of that group, and I believe that our marriage will last in the end. I don't believe I'm acting insensitively. I've spent the last month or so following the plan for surviving an affair. There's a hint of uncertainty in my wife's behavior. I enter a plan B after she goes out, and the truth is that I won't be giving her a year. According to her lease, that is her date. I'm providing her till the separation papers are processed legally. However, I've made it clear to her that I won't even be her friend after she moves out. I'll only be the mother of her child. I really think that my wife will be impacted by the Plan B, 180 approach. That is in addition to her medication, from which the therapist is attempting to wean her. Additionally, the Om himself, her family, and my son will all have an impact on her connection. I have a ton of information from his soon-to-be ex-wife. There are many things my wife will not enjoy, but she will have to learn them the hard way. I will not, therefore, wait around. I'm going to move on. However, if she looks past her pride, a chance for reconciliation might arise. Or how I would phrase it. What right does she have to stop things if I discover someone who makes me happy? Was the question she posed to me a week ago. I said that she is my child's mother. We are and will always be linked, and he deserves a whole family. She would have to stand up for me if she truly desired to be with me. She would need to exert the same amount of work and energy as she did during the affair. She would need to be open to traveling to North Carolina, open and honest, and eager to stroke my ego. I've previously informed her that I won't be her fallback option. I'm sure a lot of people will think I am, but when they compare having an affair to having an addiction, I believe them. That the WS is addicted to something and is going crazy. I think everyone deserves the opportunity to atone for their faults because everybody make mistakes. But there will be a cost. There will be a deliberate healing instead of a hasty leap of faith. My wife seems to be emerging from her fog or experiencing epiphanies, I believe. However, she still feels something for it, therefore she finds it difficult to terminate it. She's also, to be honest, weak. Since the day I met her, that has been the greatest defect in her personality. She is essentially a textbook example. A new baby in the house and life, I believe, also got to her. All of this is the worst thing I've ever experienced, and I'm not saying this as an excuse. However, after doing everything incorrectly and hitting my head against a wall for the first several months, I've adjusted my approach, and it appears to be working. Does everyone find this to be effective? No, a lot of folks would just kick them out rather than deal with their adultery. However, I'm not among them. She would have left if she had truly wanted to go. Furthermore, and I'll repeat it again, I think my soons should have the opportunity to grow up in a whole and cohesive family because I am a child of divorce. My spouse has acted exactly as expected in all she has done and in response to my actions. While she's having an affair, there is no chance that we can save our marriage. She's getting tossed out until that happens, and trust me when I say that reality is affecting her in addition to the possibility that we could start dating sooner rather than later. An update regarding the entire matter of the restraining order. Her co-worker informed me that because my wife won't certify as a witness, he either can't get one against me or it will become more difficult. Thus, as far as I know, he won't use one against me. That must enrage him, and I believe it implies to him in a subtle way that my wife is not as devoted to him as he believed. It might, of course, signify nothing. However, if I were him, I would interpret it as such. Even if it has no bearing on our relationship, it's a minor triumph nonetheless, so I'll accept it. It works for me because it annoys him. Biam reportedly texted my wife to let her know that she had arrived, and my wife reportedly cried as she waited in her car to get from my mother-in-law. That was not a confrontation, but it would have been pleasant. They should shout it from the top of the mountain, because their love is so immense. As the Am continued to remain in the store's rear delivery area, 
the coward that he is. He fears his former partner because she still has the right to demand full custody and child support from him, and she doesn't want him back, so he won't have anywhere to go when this party blows up. To be honest, I still find it hard to accept that my wife doesn't agree with him regarding the argument. It hurts him, not because it benefits me. He left his wife for me, in my opinion. Although she didn't precisely leave our marriage abruptly, she is currently being ejected and departing as slowly as possible. And one more item. This weekend, they're visiting Disneyland. My son requested that we meet there for set. I informed her that if he texts, I'm going straight home and will stroll into that store and give him the boot. He doesn't know I'm going, was her reply. Furthermore, it is not his concern. Already hiding things and lying. Next week, when the other man is present, my buddy, her co-worker's husband, and a vendor will inquire as to whether or not I made it down and enjoyed myself, just to let it know that I visited. After that, we'll observe his behavior and her response. As a result, the sword will both live and die in their relationship. She'll have moved out by then, which makes me giggle. Still, he'll ponder. My wife doesn't want the other man to even be aware that she is traveling to Orlando, as I recently learned. Back when I could read their texts, I know they had discussed wanting to go together. However, she is now concealing her holiday destination from her mother. Thus, what started out as a small falsehood about me now becomes a larger untruth. Why would she want to conceal anything, I wonder? I believed he was flawless, why would he become angry, after all? Just to be funny, here's what I mean. And my friend is going to ask her next week how Orlando was and whether or not I enjoyed myself while I was there. That ought to agitate the hive a little while the other man is around. Update, everything went smoothly in Orlando. My objectives of enjoying myself with my family, remaining silent and giving my full attention to my son, and simply attempting to be the best person I could be were all achieved. There were times when I felt like being snarky and my wife saw right through me. However, I remained silent and behaved well instead. Orlando is a trigger, so they frequently text each other about it. It felt fantastic to confront that fear. My wife even reached out and grasped my hand at one point. Yes, it's conceivable that she thought about wishing he was present at some point. However, she was undoubtedly pleased that I was present. She is still thinking positive things. We are meant to have the conversation with our son this week to clarify the situation. It will be among the most difficult things I've ever had to cope with, similar to everything else that has resulted from it. I will also confront that fear head on. The only negative aspect is that I see my hatred and rage for the entire situation returning, and I know it will thwart these well-deserved improvements. I only hope I can keep my attention on the task at hand. My spouse has begun organizing some of her belongings and intends to remove the bedroom contents this coming weekend. Even though I really need this to happen in order to avoid taking a bad turn, it feels a lot like the day I learned about the affair. And as much as I need reality to sink in and pull her out of her delusion, I'm also coming to terms with the fact that this could end entirely. Despite this, I do have hope because I know my wife very well and I have witnessed some progress. There are still some unanswered questions. For example, she might prefer living alone or she might end her relationship with him and start dating someone else while she's genuinely mending. However, she reiterated that she simply feels disoriented and bewildered and that she will collapse on her face. The OMX called me today to inform me that my wife had commented on how controlling he was getting, according to a different coworker. I've continued to wager that the holidays will be the last one, but it's getting much harder than I thought this week would. I want to be upset and begin to doubt everything since I might not have another opportunity. I want to scream and yell. But I can't undo the laboriously won adjustments, as the 180 states. I have to control my anger. Even though I really want to be mad, if we argue before she departs, that will only serve to reinforce my feelings in her eyes, as opposed to giving her a positive picture to keep with until. Tonight was our talk with our kid, and everything went exactly as I had anticipated. For the most part, I spoke. While I told them how much we loved him, my wife sat behind him and gave him a hug. It's not his fault, and he and mommy argue over how well they get along and how mommy is moving out. He will also have two rooms. He took it quite well, I think, for a three-year-old. Reiterate your devotion for me. My son said, I love you too, when I told him I loved him. While my wife stated the same thing, the reaction was very different. He wouldn't respond, so she had to ask, do you love mommy? To which he replied, no. Despite not understanding the words, he knows what is happening. And he expressed his dissatisfaction verbally. I feel terrible to my stomach right now. I hope the tiny duck is worth it to her because I want to kill him right now and I'm about as mad at my wife as I've ever been. I have a lot of things to say to that person that will essentially ruin her. However, I'd prefer not to. She has yet to file a portion of her separation documents. It's me and the 180. In addition, I'm getting ready to become a better father and get ready to go out again eventually. Might even go on a date with my wife. She will be able to see my and communicate with me, so our B plan is a little different. She will notice the adjustments I've made as a result of it. Regarding her garbage, I've proven to her over the last month or two that I am capable of handling them. I've expressed my desires rather clearly. That reconciliation can occur, but only after NC has been created. 
To aid me with that, I have spies working for her. In addition, she will receive my Plan B letter, which will re-explain everything, and I will write her therapist a letter outlining my perspective so that she is aware of my viewpoint in case we need to adjust the direction of our sessions. But for the time being, it has shielded my kid and me. She is aware that this is a safe haven. However, there are demands that cannot be met. Strangely enough, I find that in order to get her to listen, I have to talk to her a lot more strongly than before. And when I do, I have to admit that her response changes noticeably. She kind of sits at attention and is calm. I tell her how I feel about the conversation and what I want in a somewhat harsh manner. She wasn't feeling well when I became serious and altered my tone of speech. She listened as it vanished. Thus, Plana is nearly finished. I assisted my wife this past weekend in moving the last of the furniture she was taking to her new home. You say you helped her move. You say it's her problem, so screw that. Yes, I understand, but I wasn't letting that shit anywhere close to my home. And I'm organizing right up until the last minute, and it was helpful all weekend long. We all moved the things together on Saturday. Together, we completed my son's room. It's pleasant, and I wish him happiness. I gently nudged and probed my spouse to elicit what few responses I could. I questioned you directly, why him? Naturally, her response was, I don't know, but she also verified what I had been thinking for some time. She acknowledged that he had given her the if I were your boyfriend speech when I inquired, but she expressed her disbelief in me with a look in her eyes. We gave the truck back after the move. We filled it with gas and gave it back. My wife noticed that my arms were working as I was pumping gas and lifting some of the heavier items when we were driving to grab some food afterwards. She became aware of their growing size, and how powerful. She then sobbed and claimed that someone was going to get extremely fortunate if she didn't figure things out. Yes, you're right, Sunday got off to a decent start. She informed me that the OMX has been visiting her store on Tuesdays lately, and that on their most recent visit, she witnessed them conversing outside the store. They left, based on my wife's account, but he had gotten ahead of her sufficiently to catch up with his ex, so in her eyes, he had abandoned her. Her great protector fled to protect his own reputation, but my wife also thinks he might try to make amends with the ex, a theory I believe she's making up. She informed me of that warning sign and said she had brought up numerous others with her IC. The only question the IC could ask was how many red flags it would require. On that one, I didn't hear back. However, following his small bail, they fought. He described her combat technique as unforgiving and beyond his capabilities. However, I am able to. Theoretically, she also told him that I went to Disneyland in Prague just to annoy him. She then brought up the fact that they are attempting to force him to transfer permanently so he may train staff at another location, which my wife indicated she is not discouraged about. Getting a few things for her apartment and taking our baby outside for some playtime occupied the rest of the day. On set, she did attempt to lash out, but I anticipated it and simply kept my objective in mind. To resist giving in to the argument since she needed to do so in order to feel less guilty. Rather, I asserted myself and gained command of the circumstance. And she answered. This morning, I gave her my letter on backup plan. She's stopping by to watch my son and get the last of the necessities. After that, it will start tonight. From here, we'll have to wait and see. However, I believe I gave her enough information about who I am and what I can provide if she chooses to assist in mending the marriage. In the letter, I even enumerated the requirements. All we can do is wait and watch what occurs. Thus, it took place. Most of her stuff was moved away tonight. I start my revised plan B. The evening was comparatively emotional. Fortunately, my son was wired, so he diverted some of the attention and consumed some energy. It's not hurting as bad as I feared, I believe, since I knew this was coming and I know that I've done everything in my power to be the best version of myself. Of course, things can be very different when you ask me tomorrow. Simultaneously, I am forced to accept my role as a single father. I'll be a better father in a partnership if I can learn from being a good single father, which is when the countdown starts. She still gets the holidays from me. I learned that the OMX eventually revealed the truth about him a week after she moved out. She admitted to him that she was aware of the affair. His response was what you would anticipate. Falsifying, denying, altering, or shifting the truth. She asserted her complete knowledge to him. But he was a fiddler in the part of the other man. The finest part was when he said we were divorcing and that our marriage was gone. However, this is merely a formal distinction. My spouse has expressed her preference to do this over getting a divorce. My son spent his first night at his mother's place tonight. I've been doing fairly well with this modified approach so far, and we've only discussed pickups and drops. How are you doing now? I dropped my son off, but she and her mom have been getting into it a bit lately too. I receive a call after about 15 minutes because he is going crazy. When I return to soothe him till he falls asleep, they are largely silent and content to watch TV. My wife then begins to chat, and the next thing I know, she's telling me everything about how bad things are going and how much she despises her apartment. Then she talks about how she's going to take a break from her job to work things out and spend more time with our son. She tells me how disoriented and perplexed she is. She is still emotional. 
However, she is unaware of what love is. She tells me that she's told the other man to back off and that she's trying to take a break from everything, but he's making a persistent effort to get nearer. She may have even attempted to end their relationship, and he responded by saying she wasn't the kind of guy to just dump. Also, that it would be really simple. She's telling me about her last several therapy session, or something like that. How she believes he's attempting to sabotage her relationship with her son. However, she finds it difficult to fully distance herself. I listened without making any comments. However, I reaffirmed my position and what I would anticipate if the time came before I went. I take everything with a grain of salt, that much is clear. Even yet, it was fascinating, and my son eventually fell asleep, a little after his bedtime. The soon-to-be ex-boyfriend of the other man has been a great ally. She is moving on and no longer wants to be with him. She contacted me this morning to report on my son's first night. She continued by saying that he texted her seven more times between a text he sent her at 9.30 and the time I left at 10. What's wrong with the how's it going? But he also made six attempts to reach her by phone. You got that. When she didn't answer straight away, he became extremely possessive. She told me this morning that it appeared that she had a crazy on her hands. I believe that he became understandably afraid when she attempted to end their relationship. Saying that he can simply be eliminated, however, is absurd. I'm not getting my hopes up just yet. Before she's done, I'm quite sure this will happen about four more times. However, she also stated that it doesn't imply we're reuniting because she still needs time to get her life together. That's okay too. We can discuss it further after I get her out of the affair. Nevertheless, I'm still letting go. I also can't watch her date other men and be friends with her. But everything will fall into place if I put my attention on myself. Still, the show has not ended. It appears that yesterday night was more involved than I was aware of. My son was dropped off, and when I returned home, my wife let me in on more of the previous evening. Before I left, she received those SMS and calls informing her that there was another one and that she was coming over. It was 10.30 at the time. My son was there when he came. It seems he was quite angry. She claimed to have never before seen the expression in his eyes. My son was present, so she made an effort to persuade him to leave. He wasn't listening, though. She didn't go into too much detail about what else happened. He tried talking to her, but she was so tired that day that she had trouble staying awake, and I guess he eventually left. She told me this while sobbing. He thought I was there, which of course I was, and again because she essentially tried to break up with him that day. She claimed, however, that she also wanted to be honest with me because it had an impact on our son. It was everything I could do not to lash out, to keep my tongue quiet. However, I came to the realization that my wife really needed a safe harbor at this point. That going dark could put my sons and her safety in danger. That will have to take priority over the marriage, I suppose. Having stated that, we are aware of what will happen if he touches my son. Regarding the custody dispute, the OMX would also be interested in knowing about this. I also let my wife know how powerful she is in this. How to request a protective order. How to make a claim for harassment. She's hoping he'll back down like he stated. I informed her that he has already gone too far. He is not turning around. He is not going to back down. He has also uttered the phrase not the kind of guy you send away. But for now, all I can do is maintain a close check on the circumstances. Part 5 coming soon, I might try to combine all the remaining parts into one big final ending. See you there.